Hello and welcome to my update video on my two week journey moving to Linux as my daily driver. Two weeks doesn't seem like an awful lot but an awful lot has changed in that time so I was just looking to record that and let's um, go through just what these changes were on this journey of moving away from Windows. Okay so first off if you hadn't seen the previous video I was running Garuda Linux and um, I was running it on this NVMe based um, carry from Amazon that was just plugged directly into the USB-C port of my PC and I was booting and using this rather than my internal NVMe drive which still had my Windows 11 installation on it. Now from there there was a few problems. Uh, originally speed ended up being one of them. Welsh USB-C is really fast. Um, this is not a fast <laughs> NVMe drive that is in this. Um, I, I don't even know if it's NVMe quite honestly. I think it may be SATA with the speeds I was getting from it. Um, but essentially I was getting bottlenecked a little bit when I was doing a lot of things at once. It would slow down. I was noticing some kind of jitteriness around the interface usage. Um, and it, it just wasn't a good experience. I wanted to do, you know, an install locally just to get away from that. The other odd issue, however, was, and I've never had this before, I have like a desktop fan, which I'll pop on screen just now. And it's a little heater fan or cooler fan, depending what time of year it is. Essentially, when I was turning that on and off, it was causing this weird problem where it was just making my screens go completely black and not come back on. Now, I've never had that before with anything at all. So it seemed to be related to do with that drive or some sort of power thing. But either way, it doesn't do with anything else so I thought I want to get away from that as well because I can't turn on and off the heater without turning the PC on and off. So I had three main benefits from this. Benefit number one for me is storage size. So I went from using this NVMe drive which is 256 gigabytes up to a whopping two terabytes. Benefit number two it was much faster so much faster. I don't think this actually was an NVMe drive. I think this is just a SATA drive that is in this and essentially it was just getting bogged down really quickly but my NVMe drive directly in the PC is getting a good something like 3500 megabyte read and megabyte write so quite happy and it's about 20 times faster than this so I don't notice a slowdown. Boot times have been so much better and number three it doesn't turn off when I use my heater which to me is a mega benefit. Now this gave me an opportunity. I was previously running Garuda Linux before and I think a lot of people when they start using Linux start distro hopping I think that looks like it's quite a normal thing going by some of the videos I see Um, I didn't really want to do that but I thought you know what I'm gonna have a look and see what's out there and I wanted to see if I could find something that did a couple of things better than what I experienced on Garuda for the week that I was using it so I wanted something that was a bit more polished a bit more stable and I wanted it to work with specific things that I wanted to do so as mentioned in my previous video I couldn't use DaVinci Resolve I couldn't get it to install and then when I did I couldn't get it to open um, and then when I got it to open it just crashed instantly and I, it was just a nightmare. So I came across Fedora 38 which looks pretty awesome and then I came across this video by Linux Benchmark who essentially goes through gaming on Linux as a whole and this video goes through drivers, it goes through Steam settings, it goes through Proton compatibility, it covers a whole bunch of stuff but he isn't using Fedora, he's using a fork of it called Nobara and they seem to have a few things going for it. It had good community feedback. It was really stable. It has a DaVinci Resolve fix button, which I was really interested in. And all this with a cool welcome screen that was just quite minimalistic and just kind of gave you enough to get you going. So yeah, I decided to give Nobara a try. And I have to say, I was pretty impressed. So all the same stuff still worked for me, which was excellent because I didn't want to compromise anything here. If anything, I wanted to gain functionality. Spotify worked. WhatsApp worked. Messenger worked worked. When I went on to the software repository to install WhatsApp, there was two versions. One stated for Linux, one stated for desktop. Oddly enough for me, the Linux one just didn't work, which left me with a nice black screen and nothing opening. But thankfully, the desktop one did work and it gave me some functionality that I didn't have in the Linux one when I was running Garuda. When I was running this in Garuda, I wasn't able to copy and paste my screenshots. I had to save the file first and then drag and drop it into the application. Whereas in Windows, I would just copy and paste it directly into the message and now I can do that again. So that was pretty cool. Previously I didn't set up my controller which I now have so my Xbox One controller now works absolutely perfect from playing games. And yeah then I moved on to some apps that I wanted to use that I didn't get previously. So I found a variation of Notepad++ called Notepad Next which looks like the same thing. I installed Putty with the only weird caveat being that I have to hold control when I right click to paste stuff in rather than just right clicking. Slightly annoying but it works. I got Droidcam working as well so I can hook up my mobile phone now 
now if I want to for going on Discord calls or recording videos um, if only my phone wasn't dead right now. And one of the things I'm doing at the moment is trying to go through and learn my CCNA and for that I needed Cisco's Packet Tracer. Now this wasn't available in the software repository but I did find this website with a few steps, copy and paste into terminal, download, install and worked absolutely fine and I finally got my home security camera working. So if you watched the previous video on Garuda I had a lot of problems trying to get this working. I tried it through every method and it just wouldn't work at all. It was slightly different this time round with Nobara. At first I tried it in Lutris and it didn't work. I installed, it opened the first time but then afterwards reopening it just didn't work. I installed it in bottles and it installed and it ran but for some reason I got audio and no video. So eventually with some screwing around with the runners and then eventually saw a guide online someone had said to essentially use the Lutris version but set the link to the desktop because it doesn't show in the program files which was correct, it didn't, and voila, it worked. Lutris gave me a cool option for adding it to my start menu, and happy days, I now can access my security camera, which I couldn't do before. So I did find Lutris quite hit and miss when I was trying to use specific launchers. The Ubisoft launcher, for example, would install, open, let me install games, but not let me play them. The Epic Games one wouldn't work at all, giving me this error where it just ended up hanging and going no further. So I got around about that using Heroic Launcher, which seems to work a lot better. Battle.net again and installed fine which was just great because I do like a bit of Starcraft and yeah genuinely I found that it was just a little bit hit and miss with Lutris so not a big deal but most of worked which is good. Now there was some issues that I did come across that I'm not quite a fan of but they are what they are. I had this weird resizing issue when I was dragging windows from left to right on the screen if they weren't full screened you notice this massive tearing. Some people have said switching from GNOME or KDE can either cause or fix this but I haven't bothered to look at that as of yet. OBS seems to freeze for some reason. Not freeze in the standard sense but for example the screen capture thing that I'm on is called pipe wire and essentially if I leave that for too long without doing anything or interacting with it the desktop freezes and you know I can move this about and you wouldn't notice the difference but if I use it from the word go it works fine don't know why but closing and reopening it fixes it so again not a big issue it seems to work pretty well and the last kind of oddity that I've had with it which again isn't a deal breaker is when I type too fast using caps lock it like catches the second letter so if i was to type hello right now really fast and i was doing a capital h and then off of it straight onto it sometimes i would get h e as a capital and then the rest in lowercase like i expected i notice this a lot when using whatsapp especially when replying to people again not a deal breaker but it means i need to wait that little second if i'm using caps lock but overall what am i thinking i'm thinking windows is now completely erased from my ssd i'm thinking this just runs really nice I'm thinking I have all this free software at my fingertips that you normally would have had to pay for before. It's weird how when you're not using Windows you don't see Windows things anymore and it makes you realise you don't need them. LibreOffice does all the same stuff as what? So does like their Excel and spreadsheet variants. You have a mountain of browsers that give you so much more features on Linux than you do on Windows that I've noticed so far. Even stuff like GIMP and things like that for doing like light photo editing even Caden live or videos you, you just you just seem to have all these options now i know i know not all of them are better but you know what so far i've tried the majority of the alternatives and i'm pleasantly surprised so yeah i know it's only been a couple of weeks in using this as a daily driver but i don't regret it in the slightest if anything I'm enjoying it more. One of my goals was I didn't want to interact with the terminal all that much. So far it's been a pretty minimal experience but it's really funny when you start doing stuff how you start using it more and more just by default and it gives you this extra avenue for solutions. Like oh the software is not available in the software store thing. Cool command add this repository update install. It's just I don't know it's, it's like a little bit of freedom. But anyway thanks for watching this has just been an update video on this Linux journey so far. I imagine this is going to be a lot longer longer one um, and we'll probably do like maybe a one month check-in maybe a six month check-in I don't know we'll see what the future holds if you enjoyed the video leave a comment leave a like rating subscribe if you're not much appreciate it and yeah if you haven't tried Nobara Linux go give it a whirl